course an event center where the Pitt Panthers have won 27 in a row. And who's got the task of trying to put it into that? Charlie Coles, the affable 19th year head coach of uh, veteran college basketball wars. He's in his 13th year in Miami. He won his 300th game overall over the uh, the weekend of the win against Weber State. And, of course, J.B. Dixon, uh, Dixon inside uh, that uh, Pittsburgh huddle, his sixth season here at Pitt, but the tenth on the step, and nobody, nobody in Big East bas basketball on the active head coaching side wins better than J.B. Dixon at 77 percent. That's John Thompson Sr., Louis Cardaseca, you name it, all of them. J.B. Dixon at the top of that list. All right, let's take a look at the 10 of the floor for you as Miami visits. And, of course, keep an eye on the, the work of a point guard Kenny Hayes. Hayes has got to make this uh, ball club go for Miami. And Tyler Durkers has been playing excellent basketball, had five assists in the loss to UCLA. When you look at Jermaine Dixon, he'll compliment the Levance Fields, the left-hander, the brother of NBA standout Watt Dixon. And on that front line, Sam Young and Big Dewan Blair, veteran toughness and the ability to score young for the perimeter and Blair around the bucket now you look at the series history but you look at this building Miami that goes way back to the first meeting 1968 57 and one against non-conference teams in this building for Pitt that is awesome hope you're ready to go as we said uh, the thermometer is dialed up on high let's run the floor here on the Big East Network as Pitt Panthers coming off uh, that victory 86-63, and of course, LeVance Fields came back after uh, the pair of surgeries that he had in the offseason. We've got a whistle, and that is going to go on Pitt for setting an illegal pick, and it's going to go on 255-pound Dewan Blair, the Big East freshman of the year a season ago. That is a point of emphasis with the NCAA officials. They have been told, point of emphasis, there's a handful of them, illegal screens. You have to be set. I know what Miami wants to do offensively is uh, almost like a football team that wants to run the football and uh, move the chains and use up clock. They'll use a lot of shot clock. They want to shorten the game. Michael Bramos will lift that three, one of the most prolific three-point marksmen in Miami history. Uh, best shooter they've had since Wally World. Wally Zerbiak is playing for Miami. That's Tyrell Biggs as he'll rattle home that three as uh, Biggs connecting. The young man from uh, Don Bosco Prep, the 6'8 senior, extends his shooting range this year. And it makes it so much easier for Pitt because when you've got big Dewan Blair inside, you have to double the post. It gives you a lot more open looks at the three-point strike. Well, Tyrell Biggs only one start a season ago, uh, more of a complimentary player. Hayes off that show and go, and he carried the basketball. David Kaplan's going to work. Our Star Watch features a cerebral big man and a powerful big man. Well, you've got Tyler Durkers, who is the cerebral big man. He has got his hands full tonight because Dewan Blair is as strong as any low post guy in America. If he was seven feet tall, he'd be the number one pick in the draft. But at 6'7 and 265, he is a man. Oh, the young man right here from the hill section of Pittsburgh. And you think this city is a turn down? Look at LeVance Fields. The show and go as he went to the bucket and finished with the left hand. They got the screen, this time a legal screen from Big Dewan Blair. It cleared a path for him. LeVance with a 15 points, eight assists, and more importantly, no miscues the other night in the win over Farley Dickinson in here. The 27th straight victory over a non conference foe, by the by. Pitt student section, this Peterson Event Center crowd into it early on. Shot clock at seven. Hayes gave it up. That mid-range jumper won't go from Adam Fletcher. Look at Levance Fields. He wants always looking up for David to push. Blair under the hole. Got the great look from Levance Fields. Yeah, it's off to a quick 7-0 beginning. And Charlie Cole said, wait a minute. Miami's got to talk. Well, one of the things that Charlie talked with his club about today, back very vocal with his team at shoot around, he said anytime the ball goes in Levance Field's hands, everybody has to be ready to defend. Blair gets a seal, and when he holds you off, there is no way you're going to stop him, and there's no weak side help on the back end that can have any chance of stopping the big fella. You saw Adam Fletcher there, six foot eight, that wears number 41 for Miami. Certainly did not physical enough with the upper body strength. It's going to be difficult for him to handle Dewan Blair down in the blocks if that's going to be the Miami assignment all night. 
Charlie was saying today, he said UCLA's a great basketball team. But he said Pitt, Pitt is UCLA plus unbelievable physical power. And they can overpower you. Should be interesting to see how this plays out. But the way it started, not a good thing for Miami. One and done or getting beat inside. Yeah, the energetic Charlie Coles told us, you know what, it's like playing UCLA twice. Wait, I said, Charlie, wait a minute. It's like playing Pitt twice. Exactly. Ben Holland started it here. <laughs> and no. now J.B. Dixon's carrying it on. No doubt. Ben Holland's got to turn this thing around, and Jamie's done an unbelievable job at just really taking it to another level. Nick Winbush off the mark on that triple try as Miami starts 0 for 3 from the floor or trying to up tempo quickly with Sam Young and he had it ripped away. This is Michael Ramos on the dash. Nope, take that bucket away. That's an offensive foul as Jermaine Dixon, great position and took that hit from Ramos. Well, he played the body beautifully. Watch him play the body, get himself set. Don't worry about trying to block the shot, strip the ball, take the hit. Bam, go the other way. Hey, Michael Bramos trying to make something happen, the leading scorer on this ball club uh, for uh, Miami, 6'5 senior. Bramos, a uh, Mac, all uh, regular season and tournament selection a year ago. Now, that foul for Miami he is going to go on uh, Adam Fletcher. So Fletcher quickly got hit with a second. Sam Young with that line drive jumper and he'll lace it. What a smooth, sweet shooting stroke. Right, he doesn't give himself large margin for error because it's a line driver, but that's manufactured points off baseline out of bounds, well executed, got him an open look. This is a very crucial possession for Miami. In the first three minutes, they turn it over. And in the hands of LeVance Fields, a nine nothing blitz from Pittsburgh, shooting it well and defensively just swallowing up. Miami's offensive attack as uh, Jermaine Dixon went to the rim, had it slapped out of bounds. Pitt four for four as uh, Charlie Coles has that bit of a perplexed look as you look at uh, the senior Eric Pollitt, six foot five, played with his uh, brother Tim. Tim uh, last year, uh, all max selection, the ninth leading scorer. Look at Michael Bramos as well as being able to shoot it. He's one of the block shot leaders in Miami history there as he rejected Jermaine Dixon. This is Tyler Durkers trying to back down bigs. Didn't happen for Durkers. No, he was forced a couple of steps farther than where he wanted to get that baby hookup. LeVance Fields, deep, deep three, and uh, never got to the rim. I think LeVance is saying, somebody close that door here in the Peterson Event Center. Probably not the shot Jamie Dixon was looking for. No, a little quick. You get those when you're up 9-0 and you start to feel invincible. Got the lather flowing early on. Ready to go. Yeah. Now this Pittsburgh ball club, uh, they are uh, ranked uh, so high nationally, sixth in the land coming into this one tonight, and with great cause. This is a tough-minded, tournament-tested veteran squad that Jamie Dixon has put together. Fields gave it up. Collins just traveled with the basketball. Miami, David Winter, they've got to settle down and play their game and certainly not be intimidated. 9-0 Pittsburgh in the early going. Guarded uh, Pitt Panther squad. They're looking for more. I mean, LeVance Fields and some of the veterans, Dave Kaplan, playing with uh, jerseys on at shoot around today. This, you know, it's almost like March just going to be the start for them this year. But Charlie Coles has kind of a unique way of running his shoot arounds and practices, doesn't he? He does. He does not have the five starters practice as a unit. Most coaches, you'd think they want that cohesiveness. He said, no, I want everybody to compete hard against one another. So I don't want five starters dominating the five second team guys. So he will not let the five starters mm. practice as a unit. Unusual. And 19th season for Charlie Coles. That's something that he implemented a long time ago. Raising up with that jumper was Tyrell Biggs. He's a heck of a coach. Charlie Coles is one of the finest tacticians in the college basketball land. I guarantee you that. That basketball was kicked, so the, that shot clock now will stay at 25 seconds. Pitt hit their first four from the floor, though. No, one of them a uh, triple from Tyrell Biggs to open up this 9-0 lead and uh, have misfired on three in a row since. I'll say it again, a critical position for the Miami Redhawks. Huge. You have got to find a way to get the lid off the bucket, and they got it. Yeah, draining that baseline jumper is Eric Pulitz, 6'5 senior, Ottawa, Ohio. That's near the uh, Toledo area in the northwest part of the Buckeye State. But his father, 
Played his college basketball, Valparaiso in Missouri, but uh, again, brother Tim, the ninth all-time leading scorer in a first-team All-Mac choice the last couple of seasons. Tim has graduated, moved on, stolen away, Michael Bramo. So Jermaine Dixon got a little sloppy with the basketball. Too much dribbling. The way you beat pressure, guys hacking at the ball, you pass through it. Dribbling, bad things can happen. There's one of them. Ramos with that jump hook in the paint. Look at the stick back that went from 6'8". Tyler Durkers, he touched that up beautifully. And Jamie Dixon furious, thinking that it was basket interference, letting the officials have it, but they call the basket obviously good. It's 9-4. 4-0 mini run right now for the Miami Redhawks. Got a couple of hoops from Pollitz and Durkers after that blitz early on. This is Jermaine Dixon. That floater got that to fall. Plus one on Dixon. That's uh, from uh, the playgrounds of Baltimore, David Kaplan, right there. And a lot of time going against brother Juan Dixon, of course, the former Maryland great. Well, that's taking it up into the teeth of two taller guys with red jerseys on. Floater. Get it to kiss and drop. Oh, Jermaine Dixon uh, moved his way right into the starting lineup. The J.C. transfer is this young man. As we said, uh, the, uh, the Dixon family, very uh, certainly expressive. College basketball landscape. There's a Juan Dixon, of course, a part of uh, Gary Williams, along with uh, Lonnie Baxter and uh, Chris Wilcox, 2002 NCAA champions. That was a good team, real good team. Absolutely good team. And Juan and Jermaine's aunt is the uh -huh. mayor of the city of Baltimore. How about that, Sheila Dixon? Her honor, let's refer to her, her as. Honor. Right? Exactly right. Hit with a seven point advantage. Great to have you part of it tonight out of Peterson Event Center here in the Big East Network. Michael Regai alongside David Kaplan. Miami coming off a couple of games uh, out west as Eric Pollitz has dialed long distance on that three. And remember now, that line is back to 20 feet nine inches this year, foot further than the previous And season. I believe that will increase scoring. Not necessarily shooting percentage, but it makes it tougher to double the post because you got another foot to go to help and recover. So you'll see more baskets on the low block. Kerry McGee now is on the floor. Six ten sophomore out of Anderson, Indiana for J.B. Dixon and Pitt. LeVance Field raising up from deep and ripping cord on that triple. Wow, I mean, that is a rainmaker. Only shot 27% from three-point land a year ago, and I think that's something that uh, he looks to improve upon, as does Jimmy Dixon. He spent the summer working on that jump shot and trying to get healthy as well, and boy, that was a bomb. He and Sam Young and Kenny Hayes, the, uh, the orchestrator, of uh, this offense just threw it away. Hayes, the senior, out of Dayton, Ohio. Well, Jamie Dixon has just had a, an incredible six-year run here at Pitt. Of course, was on Ben Howland's staff and signed a new contract extension. It's going to keep him here in uh, the Oakland section of Pittsburgh on this beautiful campus through the 2016 college hoop season. That's a great look from Sam Young, and McGee's got a stick back. McGee stuck it back after the finish was not there from Sam Young. McGee was playing some of the role today in practice of Michael Bramos on the scout team, but he showed you right there real good athleticism. Big, tall, tough. 6'4", Antonio Ballard now on the floor for Miami as a Tyler Durker's jumper rattled out. Vance Fields always looking to orchestrate. Head up, coming up the floor. Gary McGee just got hit, David, for setting an illegal pick as he was trying to clear some space for LeVance Fields. That's the second time that they have caught a Panther with an illegal screen. Jamie Dixon asking a question to one of the officials saying, can you tell me what my guy did? This year, as I said earlier, that is a point of emphasis. And if you're going to try and set a screen from behind, you cannot be body to body. You've got to give a foot so that the defender has a chance not to run you over. You know, one of the most difficult calls in all the college basketball you know, was advantage gained. I think referees look at that. Advantage, disadvantage. Going glass for mid-type was big Julian Mabunga. He's come on the scene. He's a 6'8 freshman out of Indianapolis, Indiana. 
And has a really started to earn playing time here in the early going as a true freshman for Charlie Coles. And Ashton Gibbs, 6'2 freshman out of Scotts Plains, New Jersey, now on the floor for Pitt. Sam Young had the basketball stripped away. Numbers Pitt for Miami if they wanted it. After a 9-0 run to start it. Miami tried to get back into it. Julian Mavunga had the basketball slapped away. On the run, heading to the hole. They see her Robinson, and uh, Robinson with contact. It's going to be a Miami foul. Pitch lead is nine. Come on back with us. Pitt's lead is uh, nine after the, the Panthers came out of the shoot with a uh, quick nine nothing advantage. All right, let's take a look at Nazir Robinson off this steal, running the floor. Got some numbers. Should he have given it up? Tough to tell. I mean, I think he saw the rim in front of him and said, I could finish this. It did lead to the foul. Would have been a tough pass on the move. But if you go back to the other end of the play, Jamie Dixon's philosophy is not always to double the post. They did show double there, and it led to the turnover. And it's funny because I asked him at practice, I said, philosophy and double in the post, yeah, we don't do it that often. Occasionally, we'll show that. And that's what they worked on at the shoot around. If Miami throws it to the low block, we're going right down to the block. Well, this here Robinson uh, looking to split the pair. There's big Ben Roethlisberger. Didn't he throw the football well? over at Hines Field yesterday in that very improbable 11 to 10 Pittsburgh Steeler win. And Roethlisberger was uh, very, very hot in the chilly uh, temperatures over at Hines Field on the football. Proud Miami Gray. Yes, he is. Backdoor look, Eric Pollitz didn't finish. Well, Miami flying around the hoop. Coming away with that loose basketball, Antonio Ballard, Ballard 6 more sophomore. He missed all of uh, but one game in the 07 08 season with a foot injury. Tyler Durkers had a jump hook in the paint. Didn't drop for him. He got to convert that shot. It was a great dish when the double came. Found his man in the lane, and he just didn't make the shot. Well, look at the dump down from Nazir Robinson to Dewan Blair. And uh, Blair's going to the free throw line. The Rocks 30, six foot seven inch sophomore. Take a look at the foul. There's no doubt you're beaten. All you can do is reach around and say, please don't let him get a three-point play. I'll at least force him to make the free throws. The big fella is so tough, Blair. Once you're caught on the backside, it's over. Well, he went to Amari Stoudemire's uh, big man camp out in uh, Phoenix, Arizona this year. And uh, UConn's Jeff Adrian was there. Luke Heron Godey from Notre Dame There's was there. Player. I like Heron Godey's game as well, David. And uh, Dewan Blair, co-rookie of the year last year, but you know, the first freshman ever in the history of uh, the University of Pittsburgh program with better than 400 points and 300 plus rebounds as a first year performer. And he just keeps getting stronger and better. He has really become not just a big body, he's a basketball player. Well, Kenny Hayes in a double team. This is Eric Pollitz to load up another triple. And on that glass, Tyrell Biggs. Biggs, the strong six foot eight inch senior. Levance Fields trying to cross over. We approach the halfway mark in this uh, first half. Pitts Panthers sixth ranked nationally by 10 and with the basketball. Durkers on the switch out. Biggs wanted to make that tough pass to Dewan Blair. Wanamaker gave it up, and look at Blair with that nifty reverse off the window. Well, Miami had their opportunity at the steal, couldn't come up with the loose ball. Real nice job by Pitt then. Go right to the rim, good interior pass. It's going to be Brad Wanamaker, the 6'4 sophomore out of uh, Philadelphia, the proud Roman Catholic high school tradition. Wanamaker, 15 minutes off the bench in 30 games a year ago, so he's another uh, very much a staple of Jamie Dixon's rotation. He's got a deep, talented club, and I think they're quicker this year than they were a year ago, and they still have the same amount of physical play and toughness. Well, Miami's got to get this young man, uh, Kenny Hayes, going here tonight. Michael Ramos sitting down right now. Hayes and Ramos, the two leading scorers. Blair tried to overplay that pass down in the paint to Adam Fletcher and Dewan Blair. 
has just picked up his second personal foul. Picked up the one early on the illegal screen. That's why you hate to pick up the cheapies because rough post play is part of this game. You're going to get one or two in there. And Blair's going to sit down with a two and Gary McGee back on the floor. Well, look at the ball pressure. Double team and traps out near the timeline. Kenny Hayes to unload. Got it. Knock Hayes will knock down. down the deep jumper. How about seven for seven for Hayes the other night from three-point land against Weber State? Set a Miami record for proficiency. That tells you that he has great ability to shoot the ball, but against Weber State, no disrespect to them, he's not seeing the ball pressure he's going to get tonight. Now that is a fact, no question. This is Jermaine Dixon back on the floor. LaVance Fields got pushed by Eric Pollitz. And Miami now. And team foul is number six. So one more, you get into the one in bonus on the common fouls. At 10, you go double bonus. See, when LaVance Fields shows you he can make jump shots, now you have to play the dribble drive. Makes it very tough to defend him. Tyrell Biggs had a good look from the baseline. Couldn't cash it out, but Biggs bothered. Adam Fletcher in the basketball is going to stay with Pitch Panthers. I think Charlie Coles thought his guy was hit on the arm, and that's what led to the turnover. But official said, nope, touched by Miami. It stays with the Panthers. A Wanamaker down inside. He'll muscle that up and drop it in the hole. Nice look from LeVance Fields on that set inbound. That's the second baseline out of bounds play they've run that have manufactured points for him. Four points so far, a baseline out of bounds play. Lead back up to 12 again. Kenny Hayes and rainbow triple, and you can book that. So Kenny Hayes now started to maybe get in the feel and heat it up. Well, how about him from three-point land well, this year? As we said, 7-7 seven seven the other night against Weber State. That was a bomb. LaVance Fields trying to answer the deep three. That big board will uh, come out from Miami. Glad you're part of it on the Big East Network tonight at the Peterson Events Center. Michael Regai alongside David Kaplan, Bill Sisler, our producer, and Michael Kovic, our director. First time since 1968. Talking about 40 basketball seasons ago from the last time that Miami and Pitt got together. Now that three from Miami's Antonio Ballard will rattle and go. Miami using Kenny Hayes, heating it up, and the three from Ballard have now cut it to six. It's a good Miami team, and people that don't know what the score was when we played at UCLA the other day, they lost by five, and they had the ball down one with 50 seconds. 6-0 Miami run now. Brad Wanamaker, his pass was stolen away. Numbers for Hayes and Pollitz. Kenny Hayes will go glass off a nice look from Eric Pollitz. Make it a nine, make it an 8-0 Miami run, and they have cut their deficit down to four. They'll grind with you and grind with you, David. That's the style of basketball Charlie Coles loves to play, and it all starts on the defensive end with their activity. He was saying today that the key for them is, A, don't turn the basketball over, and he knows there's going to be great ball pressure, and B, Finding the open man, being unselfish, then making shots. That was unselfish play right there by Pollitz. Finds Hayes, easy layup. Well executed. And again, this Miami ball club, they uh, they beat Weber State in the uh, the 2K Classic as uh, they got them by uh, by 10 in that 70 to 66 win, by four rather, and then came back and only lost by four to UCLA. Well, the uh, the rim's friendly here for the uh, the road squad at the Peterson Events Center for Antonio Ballard. You know, this is one of those arenas where you ha don't have that deep municipal type feel where there's no background. This is a good arena to shoot in. Shooters will tell you they like a background right behind the basket. You get that in a building like this. So did you go always go in the day before? Shoot around, get your 300 jacks up to get you the background just to your liking. Just the way you like it. I understand. I understand. You know, Miami's done this without Michael Bramos, their leading scorer on, on the floor. Michael has come back. As that shot clock now will come to 10 for LeVance Fields. This is Jermaine Dixon. Tough. Oh, 
Big slide jumper is right there from behind the glass along that left baseline. Well, those are ones as a defender you don't really feel bad about because there's nothing more you can do. That is just a tough play to finish. Tyler Durkers with muscle got it off the glass. And how about the Adam Fletcher putback as Fletcher was left unchecked from the weak side. Well, this pit crowd uh, thinking maybe there might have been offensive interference. The first one a couple minutes ago, I think maybe people had a, a chance to yell about it. This one I thought was a solid tipping. Sam Young the raise and that three wouldn't go down young will battle on the baseline and Sam Young is going to get hit with the uh, Pitt Panther personal foul as uh, he and Antonio Ballard battle here comes Miami the deficit is now just four. Let's go back and take a look at Miami's last possession to the offensive end as you look at Tyler Durkers now Gary McGee didn't get a piece of that. But watch Adam Fletcher's that basketball still on the cylinder if it extends to infinity straight up and that's how it is the rule says the, the cone of the basket goes straight up to the ceiling and it's very close it looked like the edge of that ball was still in the cylinder very close that's what Jamie Dixon was arguing about Miami with hoops on their last four possessions. They were down nine early on. Michael Bramos. I think McGee got a piece as Bramos tried to slash to the rim. But look at Bramos on the deck to come away with the loose basketball. Ballard can't triple. Offensive board, though, for Adam Fletcher. And Miami with at least three opportunities, unless they turn it over. And now you're going to get a reach in foul and a hold as Trayvon Woodall, the young man from. Uh, the perfect uh, St. Anthony's program under Bobby Hurley Sr. in New Jersey. So born and raised in Coney Island section, Brooklyn, New York. He's going to the free throw line. Trayvon Woodall, five assists, David, in his debut the other night in the win over Farley Dickinson. And um, you know, he probably going to get a lot of time behind LeVance Fields as the backup lead guard here. He will. LeVance coming off, of course, dealing with multiple surgeries, missed games last year with a foot injury. And I, I'm sure Jamie Dixon's going to say there are going to be moments I want to pick spots where I can get him some rest and keep him as fresh as possible for March because that's what Pitt's playing for, where they're going to be in March. This is going to be a team with a chance to win a national championship. He did a great job there defensively pickpocketing Carl Richburg. Trayvon Woodall looking to uh, complete the pair here as uh, that was a 17 foul on Miami's Red Hawks. So one in bonus time for the final 513. Again, when you reach 10, it'll turn into a double bonus. Hayes got shut off by Trayvon Woodall. Kenny Hayes showing those quicks. That's excellent, excellent movement with uh, the basketball from Kenny Hayes. As he got contact, and he'll go to the free throw line. Well, the, one of the best plays, one of those underrated plays in basketball, is the head and shoulder fake. And he gives a good head and shoulder fake, sells it, then he draws the hit. Really nice job on the dribble drive. Good look at Kenny Hayes, a young man from Dayton, Ohio. He's a junior college All-American at Cincinnati State. To all of you in the uh, the southwest part of the Buckeye State around uh, the Oxford, Ohio campus, well aware of this young man who grew up in Dayton. His game really evolved last year as he became the backcourt leader with the basketball for Charlie Coles. He's got eight and looking for nine now and is off to that slow start. As Hayes will rack up a couple of free throw makes. This lead back to four again as we come inside five minutes. That basketball was kicked as uh, Nazir Robinson trying to find uh, Sam Young with that bounce pass. So Sam Young uh, not able to get going yet. Young man who uh, averaged. 18 a game a year ago. I want to remind you the ESPN National Golf Challenge is uh, ready for all of you golf fans and club pros. Registration for the 09 ESPN National Golf Challenge is already underway for courses and teams in the uh, the gross net and new 55 and older senior division. If you'd like more info, log on to ESPNGolf.com. Excellent steal by Ballard. And look at that swat away from Sam Young. He said, get out of here, Kenny Hayes. Boy, that is the absolute best defender you can have the eraser at the other end. Well, 
Sam Young not able to heat it up yet on the offensive end, but doing the work on the defensive side. Ramos went for the steal. Levance Field has tripled from deep out of that left corner, pure from Fields. Well, they have so many weapons, Michael. They can beat you at the rim, they can block shots, beat you in transition, and then when you think you've got everything covered, Lil Levance Fields is spotted up in the corner. Fields now has eight. That was silky smooth. And Levance Fields is going to get hit with a push. And that is the 17th foul on Pitch Panthers. Miami at the free throw line. When we come back after Levance Fields drains the three, the lead at seven for Pittsburgh. Leader, toughness. It's synonymous in the hoop dictionary of Levance Fields. Showed it to us in the first half. Well, he beat you off the dribble. He knocks down the triple. Says, you're going to play that. I'll go by you. And then everyone looks at this. Where did he come from? Hiding out in the corner. He knocks down another bomb. Well, Levance Fields now with eight. And remember, uh, coming off a uh, stellar effort. Uh, and broken left foot a season ago. Caused him to miss 12 games. Pittsburgh went eight and four while he was out. This guy's a winner. 52 and 12 in the 64 games he started. That's his basketball team's record here during his uh, course of time at Pittsburgh. Well, when you look at the record of that guy, Jamie Dixon, the head coach here, and you think of Levance Fields, they're synonymous together because he's an extension of the coach on the court. Sure. All right, Kenny Hayes uh, getting it done now. Hayes with 11, and remember, he was off to a slow start, but Hayes has really picked it up. Pittsburgh's lead is five. Great to have you with us tonight on the Big East Network. Always love our visits to the Peterson Event Center. Sam Young off the curl. In that gorgeous plus one for Sam Young. How about the degree of difficulty? Gathers, goes glass, trip to the free throw line with it. And a soft, soft shot. There's the curl move. Defender is trailing him. Nobody steps out and helps out to cut off the path to the basket. That is something when Charlie Coles watches the tape, he says, hey, guys, it's team defense, not just individual one-on-one, -on -one, man to man defense, team defense. Well, Sam Young, the all Big East first team selection a season ago with his uh, first marks in the book tonight. Sam Young. Extending Pittsburgh's lead back up to eight. This is Antonio Ballard, and he'll rip home that line drive three. Drive and kick. Got real good penetration. He was already spotted up. A really good shooter. Has his feet set, his hands ready. Catch, shoot, knock it down. Well, Pitt build the lead back up to eight, nine, and then the Hayes or Ballard shoot it real well. Jermaine Dixon, that tough jumper boarded by Tyler Durkers. Kenny Hayes looking to push. I would normally tell you that this game uh, over around uh, 30 points plus in the first half, uh, maybe a little bit too much for Miami's liking. Charlie Coles likes to play it in the upper 50s if he can, maybe the low 60s. You know, if it gets up into the upper 70s, 80s, it favors uh, a team like Pitt. Michael Bramos looking for his first hoop tonight. Durker's got it swatted by the tandem of Young and McGee. Shot clock at five. Hayes has got a hoist. Drew some rim with that long three. And that was just a bailout. You have to shoot it. Shot clock running out. He nearly knocked it down. Hayes crossed over. Nazir Robinson's floater didn't go down. Kenny Hayes will save on the baseline to take Miami to the offensive end. Miami wants to govern tempo. That's the key to what they do. Look at Hayes. Got through traffic. Had a couple of opportunities. And there's Tyler Durkers on the putback. And again, when we've seen three times in the first half, David, when Miami gets multiple opportunities at the offensive glass, J.B. Dixon has said, give me a timeout. I got to talk about that. Well, when you have big size guys that he has, you know, guys that can get to the rim, even the 6'6 guys that can fly up there and get rebounds and taps, and he sees nobody really giving him the effort he wants to box out, you're exactly right. Give me a timeout and let me try and control my team immediately. What's at stake uh, on this Monday night in uh, mid-November? Miami uh, trying to pick up their first win over a ranked foe going back about seven basketball seasons. And if you're the Pitt Panthers, well, they'd like to extend their dominance over non-conference foes to 30 in a row. Only one loss, David. That's the Bucknell a few seasons back. 
uh, the year that uh, the Bison went to the NCAA tournament. And that was the coming out party for that Bucknell team. Everyone went, who just won at Pitt? And then all of a sudden, they beat Kansas, and they've, right. of course, been a factor on the national scene ever since. I bet you at tournament time, you are uh, one of those guys that absolutely watches every moment that the basketball is in the air, right? Just like you, yeah, Just like me is right, no question. Best time of the year. Nazir Robinson doesn't finish from point blank range. Sam Young, tough jumper, no. Didn't happen for him. Young again, great look to Robinson with a left hand reverse to go. That's just effort, that's after the timeout. That's the coach saying, guys, I need more out of you. And that's banging the glass. One is here, Robinson, Chester, PA, six foot five, very explosive. And the coaching staff at Pitt really hopeful that this young man will be one of those kids that continues to ascend in this program. Shot clock at 10. Durkers will step back and stick it. Not usually Tyler Durkers game. We call him cerebral. He says, hey, Rega, I can hit baseline jumpers too. And that was a prime time baseline jump shot. Now Durkers went for the rip away as we're inside 60 seconds left. Miami hanging tough with this Pittsburgh lead at three. Advanced Fields in trouble at a double team. Look at the defense. Fields with a fantastic delivery with a left hand. Well, it got away with a little bit of a bump. I think there were some hands on him. But he just bounces off it like a pinball and gets himself a lane to the, to the basket. And the lead is five. You got a seven second differential game clock and shot clock here as we wind it down to the first half. Kenny Hayes got shut off. Kenny Hayes wants to shoot the basketball. He's hot. I would too. Look at to light it up. Hayes, tough, tough jumper. Fields was right in his shirt. A lot of time for LeVance Fields. Ten seconds left, first half. LeVance Fields, so cool, under control, not worried about it. Fields from deep. Missed it wide left, and that will end the first 20 minutes of basketball. Looked like Pittsburgh was going to go on domination as they got it to a 9 0 to 21 9 lead, but. Kenny Hayes has responded. Miami coming back, trying to pull off what would be a major upset of the sixth rank Pittsburgh Panthers. Don't go away. Halftime coming up out of Pittsburgh next. Cardiac Hill. <laughs> it helped your quads, I'm here to tell you. No question. You got about a good it. workout at Cardiac uh, Hill. I'm going to drive the next time yeah. I come up. Kaplan's getting soft on us. All right, let's go to start this second half. Adam Fletcher had a good look from the baseline as Sam Young. We'll take off the Fletcher miss. We'll set the 10 on the floor for you. And uh, I'll give you a quick glance, and it's the same 10 that started this one tonight for both coaches. Well, Vance Fields in that backcourt with Jermaine Dixon who will hoist the three and bury that triple. Well, a good start to Pitt again. They got a great start at the beginning of the game, 9-0, and now they get a great start here. They get it, force a miss, and then hit a trip. All right, partner, on the offensive end, how did Charlie Coles and get my Michael Bramos going? We'll venture down that road next. Well, Jermaine Dixon uh, connected on that three to bump the Pittsburgh League to eight. Charlie Coles said, well, why is everybody not taking the basketball out of bounds? Nobody's coming back to help uh, inbound, and that's why the head coach of Miami Got that quick timeout just 45 seconds into the second half. A great to see Brandon Knight, one of the highly decorated lead guards in the history of uh, Pitt's program in the Big East, a large part now of Jamie Dixon's staff. And brother of NBA star Brevin. Oh, Brevin very, very well from his Cleveland Cavalier days. LeVance Fields will push it. Dixon again to unload the three. Had a real clean look at it as that's boarded by Kenny Hayes. So. Kenny, how you get Michael Bramos going right now? Bramos has not scratched the book yet. I think you're going to put the ball in his hands, and it may lead to other guys getting opportunities, which we just saw right there. But Miami cannot afford to miss these easy bunnies inside. You're going to miss open looks, but if you put the ball in Bramos' hands, the game plan is to run multiple defenders at him. That'll get guys like Hayes open looks. But when you get a stick back, you've got to convert it. Now, Bramos will draw a lot of attention, that to be sure. Nick Winbush 
just did not convert at point blank range. And Miami does not want to begin the second half like they started the game. What a tremendous bounce pass from that difficult angle to Dewan Blair, who finished, give the nice assist to LeVance Fields. Dewan Blair, who got in early foul trouble with a two fouls of the first half. Blair on the night with his second field goal make. He's got five. So the lead up to 10 again, a couple of minutes in to this second half. Winbush, that short jumper wouldn't drop. Well, Miami's had some good looks here early, and they just cannot get him to drop. Sam Young ran the floor. That left-handed floater came up on the, uh, the front of the rim, but Young got his own, and you get a fresh 35-second clock for Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. That's going to be a blocking foul that is going to go on uh, Adam Fletcher trying to deal with 250-pound man-sized Dewan Blair on that block. Well, that man right there, Nick Winbush, he's had a couple looks here early and has not converted him. Spent part of the summer in Ghana with his uncle. Can Sam Young shoot the basketball? One of the prettiest strokes in all of the land as he knocks down that jumper. His dad and his uncle were supposed to tour Ghana, where his uncle is a historian, and his dad, tragically, a heart attack, claimed his life be just before finals, and Nick said, I'll take my dad's spot, and spent part of the summer touring Ghana. Yeah, a very tragic story. As you look at uh, Tyler Durkers, trying to be very uh, aggressive around the rim as he got that uh, jump hook to go down. Miami has to keep the Panthers at arm's reach. They can't look up and say, oh man, we're 15 down. Got to keep it to a comfortable working margin within arm's reach. Dixon from deep and ring up that triple again. Jermaine Dixon. Well, you think the young man doesn't have a scores mentality? The biggest lead of the night for Pittsburgh. It's up to 13 as Charlie Cole sees this lead expand. He's got his second timeout before the first television break of the second half. There's no point saving them in your in your quiver. You have to have control of the ball game. You got to get your guys back where you want them again as a coach. So you use the timeouts. You hate to do it, but you have to do it. Eight assists now for Levance Fields. And we asked Jamie Dixon at shoot around today. Did it surprise you that maybe Fields was able to beat the curve again? You know, we're talking about a young man who broke his left left foot, then had to have a second surgery, bone grafts developed an infection and he wasn't projected any timetable for himself David but I think it probably in the back of his mind he had uh, last Friday night against Farley Dickens and circled as when he would be back yeah, I met him earlier today when I first walked in the building and he said I was planning to play my whole season <laughs> exactly right <laughs> yeah yeah and uh, as we said what a, a, a general and an absolutely tenacious leader he is Pittsburgh Panther basketball extension of the coach and when you got that comfort zone if you're Jamie Dixon with the Levance Fields you're loving it now Kenny Hayes is going to come up short on that triple try run out with numbers Pittsburgh this is Sam Young silky smooth as he drops the jump hook down in the paint yeah. now at 15 Miami has got to get a great shot opportunity here and that is going to be an offensive foul that's going to go on Adam Fletcher, and that's number three on Fletcher. That's the third illegal screen we've seen called here tonight. Watch Sam Young operate. Phenomenal athlete. And here comes Levance Fields. Finds the ball to, to Young, who does a real nice job. Just as you said, silky smooth with that baby runner. Took 300, not shots, 300, had to be 300 makes in this building this summer. It's Sam Young. Look at him operate in the paint. You talk about toughness with that upper body. Takes contact, still drops it in the hole. Young is on a roll right now. And that means Pitt is on a roll because now you start to play him. That opens opportunities up inside. And of course, we know what Levance Fields can do with the ball in his hands. A 14 to 2 run to open the second half for Pitt's Panthers. This is a 14-2 Pitt Panther run to open up a 17-point advantage as we bring you back inside the Peterson Event Center. Make no mistake, Sam Young has a deluxe offensive game, but you know what? He showed his overall dominance as well tonight. And, you know, it's really a microcosm of who he is as a person. You'll see him here defensively. 
You see him on the curl move, knock down the perimeter jumper. There's the baby hook, the runner. And then he'll knock this one down off the dribble drive, take the hit, and score. He's also the guy they call the Renaissance man. Off that pitch steal, Jermaine Dixon will solo for the Panthers. 16-2 run to start the second half. It's getting away from Miami, pit up by 19. Sam Young also plays the piano. He reads poetry at a coffee house in the area. His motivation, he said, to get into the piano. He has a brother who is blind, who is a pianist, who also was a successful wrestler and judo black belt. And he said, that is my motivation, my brother Michael Spriggs. He is a renaissance man. I love the, the, uh, the pianist tickling the ivories like uh, Sam. I want to go on some of those road trips and see Sam, like hold court maybe, you know, at one of the opulent New York City hotels at Big East tournament time with Sam putting out a concert. And then be fun, wouldn't and it? And then reading poetry. <laughs> and reading poetry to us. We'll take him down to the village and have him do that on open mic night. Or He's something. actually had a publisher contact him and say, when you're done playing, we'd like to publish. He's got 24 or 5 very well accomplished poems they like to put in a book. Speaking of Sam Young, he left that three on the side of the rim, had to as the shot clock was running down. But again, talking about a 16 to 2 run to open up the second half. That's going to be a little less now because Kenny Hayes has dropped that deep jumper. Again, that Three point line extended out a foot this year to 20 feet nine inches between the old line, and you got the international line, and you got the NBA line. And in a lot of these areas, you have the old line, which the women use. You have, as you said, the international line. Sometimes you're looking and thinking, which line do I have to get behind? <laughs> but I really believe maybe you'll see a lower percentage of threes made, but I think it'll increase scoring because if you try to double the low post, a guy like Blair, if you run a double at him, now the defender who shows it and tries to recover has a farther distance to go. That one foot will give a guy a cleaner look. I agree with you, David. I think it's going to open up opportunities around the block and uh, you know, work in the, the, the painted area for some of the uh, premier inside players in the game. Let's hope so. Well, Kenny Hayes leading Miami with 13. This man right here, Michael Bramos, their leading scorer, still has not gotten anything offensively but yeah Pittsburgh's doing a tremendous job uh, always uh, keeping Ramos as a marked man all right golf fans and club pros registration for the 2009 ESPN National Golf Challenge is already underway for courses and teams in the gross net and new 55 and older senior division if you'd like more info log on to ESPN golf .com. what's your handicap Campbell index is six three very strong I like the play I'll, I will not continue to talk about that because <laughs> you are superb Michael Bramos had to launch as that shot clock was getting tight Michael Bramos great pure stroke but not able to find much operating room tonight as here Robinson is on the floor and he was uh, tied up with a basketball without a decision to make and now it's Jamie Dixon that'll take the Pittsburgh 30 second timeout. You and I were here to watch both teams practice today, and both teams really got after it. You know, people here, they have a walkthrough or a shoot around. They think it's just shoot a couple jumpers, walk through a play or two, and leave. Both clubs really got after it. Very intense coaching, very solid practices. But the Pittsburgh practice, the focal point was Michael Bramos. We are going to know where he is at all times. They went in then and watched tape of the UCLA game and he was definitely on the minds of the pit players. I always tease, tease Charlie Cole stuff. Coach, you're going to have to start taping. If you're going to go around and shoot around for an hour and a half when going at 100% capacity, you got to start taping. A lot of the college basketball preview editions feature Pitt Panthers on the cover. LeVance Field, Sam Young, Dewan Blair, and why not? Veteran, so tough-minded. Blair, and one with power. Strike around the bucket and a trip to the free throw line with it. That kid is just an absolute beast around the basket. Watch him take the hit. He's going to end up on his back, but he finishes the shot. He didn't just flip it up there. That shot, he stayed with it, got the hit, got the hoop, got the hunt. Going to the line, a very balanced offensive attack tonight as his lead is up to 19. Jermaine Dixon, the young sophomore with 12. 
It's a fourth Panther now with Dewan Blair completing that three point opportunity. And he'll go to the bench and get glad handed by Jamie Dixon. Four pit Panthers in double figures. They have really balanced it out. 12 for Jermaine Dixon and 11 for Sam Young. Lavance Fields with 10. And then now Dewan Blair to the bench in double figures as well. The lead is 20, largest lead of the night. We're seven minutes into the second half. There's Michael Bramo, still can't find it. Ashton Gibbs ran the basketball down and threw it away. Excellent steal, Durkers. Offensive foul, player control foul is going to be called on Julian Mavunga. Mavunga, the young man who showed so well against Weber State and UCLA in his first playing time. Well, nice job to come back to the bat, to the ball, get the steal, but. You've got to know what the moment of truth is. He absolutely did not. He ran his guy over, no doubt about the offensive foul. The moment of truth, that instant you go, okay, I've gone too far, now I'm in trouble. Yeah, Trayvon Woodall is on the floor now, the young man from uh, St. Anthony's National Championship program uh, a year ago. Uh, Woodall has uh, replaced uh, Levance Fields. Uh, we uh, discussed uh, the uh, the outstanding offensibilities of uh, Levance Fields and Michael Bramos and our star watch pretty one sided here uh, about uh, 28 minutes into it. Yep, Fields will probably finish this night with a double double one assist away already there in points and for Bramos it's one of those nights It'd be 22 at UCLA and this was another chance to impress on the national stage but he has really struggled right now. Well, ben Howland implementing a lot of young talent into his program and rotation as that shot clock is at five. I'm putting it on the deck was Brad Wanamaker that long range three from Trayvon Woodall. Got to call the bank from out there. Got a couple of youngsters on the floor now for Miami's Red Hawks. Carl Richburg wears number five and Kramer Soderberg, a familiar college basketball name, the young three point marksman, the son of Brad Soderberg, the former St. Louis coach. Well, look at Pittsburgh's defensive tenacity. This is Michael Bramos. Just won't drop tonight. With a sharpshooter out of uh, the Detroit area, Harper Woods, Michigan. Woodall crossed over, lost it. Soderberg on the push for Miami. Great look to Bramos. Didn't drop, but he does get a trip to the free throw line with it. All right, coming back, Pittsburgh lead is 20 when we return on the Big East Network. Was a five-point Pitt Panther lead at halftime at 35-30. That's a 19-4 run in the first eight minutes plus to begin this second half. Look at the offensive balance for Jamie Dixon's ball club. That's a way to make a head coach smile, isn't it? Yeah, they've been very unselfish with the basketball. Fields, who's their floor leader, has almost double digits in assists in addition to scoring the ball very well today. And I think they've come out in the second half, and their effort on the glass has been much, much better. Makes us believe that there might have been a lot of counseling, educating from that man, Jamie Dixon. Of course, the Miami Red Hawk quarterback, a great Pittsburgh Steeler, quarterback in excellence, Ben Roethlisberger. Had one of the finest years in Miami Red Hawk and Mid-American Conference football history. And he led his ball club to an undefeated campaign in 2003, of course, before being a first-round choice here with the Pittsburgh Steelers. We were saying in the first half, that effort he put on yesterday uh, against the Saints, I thought, extraordinary. I uh, watched a little bit of it yesterday afternoon and uh, in the very troubling conditions of Heinz Field uh, threw the football very efficiently for Mike Tomlin's squad in the win. Didn't turn the football over once. Nope. That's how you win in a game like that. He got, I didn't mind being Roethlisberger with all of that uh, supreme talent that he has to go around with him offensively. They thought that offensive line was going to be a problem spot this year for the uh, Stillers. At times it has been. Now Levance Fields. Gibbs to line up a triple and he'll knock it down. That's Ashton Gibbs, the 6'2 freshman out of Scotts Plains, New Jersey. He had two threes in the win over Farley Dickinson on Friday. Well, we just got the, the up to date stat breakdown. I told you I thought they were rebounding better. Pitt is now out rebounding Miami for the game. They were five down at the half. Tyler Durkers gave it up inside. Mavunga with a left hand. 
to Juan Blair will swallow that up. I love watching Blair work his magic around the rims. Such a physical presence, and he opens things up for everybody else. The Vance Field says, give me three of these, as he stepped back and rocked the crowd with delight as well. The Vance Fields, 15 points, eight assists the other night. But tonight it has uh, been uh, a very balanced offensive attack, and this man right here, Michael Bramos, just not able to get going. Richburg with that uh, baseline three that missed everything. Fields will push it. Great give up in the reverse off that pretty look from Nasir Robinson. Well, that is Pittsburgh basketball 2008 2009. They have tremendous quickness and they also have that physical play inside. They clear the glass. Bam, they're gone the other way. Double double Levance Fields, 12 points and 11 helpers. And it's Tyler Durkers with the solid work around the rim. I want to remind you tonight's Big East game is being produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television Incorporated. If you'd like more information, log on to ESPNplus.com alongside David Kaplan. And a fine ESPN and Big East production team. I'm Michael Regai. As Pittsburgh has really dialed up the heat on Miami in the second half. 35-30 at the break. Pittsburgh has gone on a 26-8 binge to open this second half in the first 10 minutes plus of it. And Pitt turned it over there. And to show you what a coach is like, they, they only care about the play at the time. I'm watching Jamie Dixon, and he was just living. Furious. And I look up, I went, wow, 61-38, you're angry. But that's what coaching is. You coach each play. Julian Mavunga, the freshman. They're trying to get Blair off his feet. Too many steps. Traveled with it. He was ball faking Dewan Blair, who wasn't buying any of it. All right, great to have you part of a Big East Network Hoops tonight. We're live out of the uh, Peterson Events Center on the campus of the University of Pittsburgh. The sixth-ranked Panthers hosting Miami Redhawks with Dave Kaplan. I'm Michael Regai and all of our terrific Big East Network crew. Ramos spent the summer in Greece playing with other U.S. college players of Greek descent. Averaged 25 a game over there and really felt that was something that helped his game tremendously because of the level of play that he went up against. And yeah, Michael Ramos is a player. Make no mistake about that. He will be one of the, uh, the mainstream guys in Mid-American Conference Hoops this year. Julian Mavunga, the young man, 250-pounder on that 6-foot-8-inch frame out of Indianapolis with his first bucket of the night. Don't have solid bench production for Charlie Coles this year. Got him in against Weaver State and UCLA. Played very well for his first taste of college game. As Levance Fields feeling it. He has unloaded some deep, deep trays tonight. Blair. This crowd was ready to explode if that would have dropped as he worked through the paint. You got the big fell out hustling down, at get a, getting a rebound along the baseline, and then operating. And a stick back is going to fall from Tyler Durkers. Durkers is having a strong night. Tyler, 6 of 12 from the floor. He's got 12 points and four boards to pace Miami tonight along with Kenny Hayes. Now Durkers, you saw him as a freshman and a young man from Cincinnati Moeller. Outstanding athletic programs at that high school in southwest Ohio. Bring up that tray as uh, Tyrell Biggs. He started the night by connecting on a three and has his second here in the second half. Now this is what uh, Charlie Coles was uh, hoping wouldn't happen. I mean, uh, Pittsburgh uh, looking like they're going to put 80 in the books. And David, this is what you and I were talking about at shoot around today. Miami cannot play a game against uh, this superior talent of Pittsburgh. It was going to get in the mid 70s, 80, and above that. They had to keep the game in the 50s, low 60s. And Pittsburgh's they blown it out to here in the muck second. Muck it up a little bit yeah. and slow it down. Big, big second half for J.B. Dixon's Pitt Panthers, sixth ranked in the land and uh, doing their thing with this 22 point advantage. We get you back inside the Peterson Event Center. All right, let's take a look at his stat track. Wow. 
Pittsburgh just blowing it up here in the second half. And those have been good looks. Uh, they've knocked down their triples when they've had good open opportunities. They've crashed the glass. Sam Young has been just outstanding. And let's not forget the fact, Michael Regai, that Gilbert Brown, who could be a starter on this team, is not playing tonight due to an injury. That's another great athlete that they bring at 6'6", who plays both guard and forward. Excellent point, and how big was he last season when Levance Fields went down with injury? As we said, Pitt went 8-4. and four. And uh, Gilbert Brown was a large part of it. Mabunga to hoist the three. And uh, as we said, uh, Trayvon Woodall remains on the floor right now with Jermaine Dixon in the backcourt. Tyrell Biggs, Sam Young, and Gary McGee. That's the five that Jamie Dixon currently has uh, on the floor. Whistle away from the ball. And I think that's uh, going to be uh, the youngster. They get Eric Pollitz instead. Yeah, Pollitz, yeah, both Pollitz and uh, Kramer Soderberg were banging around uh, around the hoop. And Pollitz got hit with a personal foul on uh, Miami. That is uh, going to be team foul number five here in the second half. When you look who's back in this program pit next year, Jermaine Dixon will be back. Gilbert Brown will be back. Sam Young graduates, so you have to replace his athleticism. But Dewan Blair, just a sophomore. Gary McGee, just a sophomore. And they've got a top recruiting class. Got a top 10. It will be that. And Sam Young with that outstanding finish and one coming from the free throw line. There's no one in the college football uh, landscape that has produced. It's called the Crater Hill Coaches. Miami University, uh, more football coaching greats. Back to Weeb Eubank, of course. Paul Brown. Era Parsege and the late Wayne Woodrow Hayes and the late Glennie Boho Schembechler. I mean, you talk about some of the premier college coaches to pass through one football program. That list would be hard to top. Well, you could also add in Bill Mallory, John Pont, John Pont, and the late Randy Walker, who won a Big Ten title at Northwestern back to back. And the late Terry Hepner. There's another one who uh, unfortunately passed away as well while he was coaching Indiana. Had a chance to talk with Brad Bates today, the outstanding athletic director uh, of Miami's program. Brad Bates played for Bo Schembechler at the University of Michigan. We were reminiscing a lot about that. A lot of my high school football teammates, school I went to in Detroit, uh, also played uh, with Bates at Michigan. Harlan Huckleby, Curtis Greer, sure. some of the greats of uh, the Michigan football program. <laughs> Basketball is going to remain uh, with Pittsburgh. Uh, Levance Fields, uh, probably his night's work done. Fields, 12 assists, that's a career high. And for a double-double and stuff in that stat sheet with the 12 points and 12 helpers. 12 helpers and five of nine. One of those four misses from the field was at the end of the half when he took about a 35-footer. So, I mean, he shot the ball very effectively today. He beat people off the dribble, got a layup, hit a couple triples. Yeah, he's had quite a night. Keep an eye on Trayvon Woodall. He's an excellent distributor of the basketball. Tyrell Biggs didn't finish. Kenny Hayes will push. Hayes uh, gave a good look uh, to Rodney Haddix, who's on the floor. Rodney Haddix is second. 6'3", sophomore out of Kentucky. Look at Woodall. Oh, he's delivering those dimes. Great distribution to Tyrell Biggs for the quick hoop. Miami's tired now. They just they gave everything they had. And now you can tell they're just exhausted. Now the lead at 27. 35-30 uh, again. It bears repeating at halftime. Miami was right there after a solid last 10 minutes of the first half. Kenny Hayes will be fouled on the way to the rim. And uh, that is going to be just team foul number four on Pitt. Calling that a, a shooting foul, so to get Kenny Hayes to the free throw line. Hayes had a solid night. They got off to a slow start, but uh, Hayes with the 13 points, four boards, four assists to pace Miami tonight. Their big problem is they could not get their leading scorer, Michael Bramos, going. The uh, preseason MAC first team choice. Bramos, who lit UCLA up for 22 as we showed you in the open of our show just not able to shake it didn't have much daylight either David you mentioned it three times uh, Pittsburgh's defense geared to get after him tonight 
they have run multiple guys at him. He's tried to post up, double him, try and come out by the three-point line. There's two hands active at him at all times. So he's uh, he's had his hands full. It's one of those nights for Bramos, and he'll be left to think about it until Miami gets on the floor next. Uh, Akron from the Mid-American Conference comes in here. It's angle with uh, Pittsburgh as part of the Legends Classic. The Pitt Panthers will be going to Newark. Uh, over Thanksgiving weekend. As Trayvon Woodall missed the three, but another 35 second shot clock. Biggs will attack the bucket and one. A strong finish. Tyrell Biggs going to the rack. That is finishing. He kept his eye on the prize the entire time, caught it, bounced, lay it in. Pittsburgh Panthers, they flex their muscle. The second half, and uh, you like this attack in the hoop and the finish with it? I love when you can catch the ball, take the hit, and finish inside. Mr. Biggs shows you he knows how to play around the rim. That was prime time. Five Pitt Panthers in double figures, and they have spread the wealth offensively. Uh, out, outstanding performance tonight, paced by 14 for uh, Sam Young, 12 apiece for LeVance Fields and Jermaine Dixon, and 10 apiece for Tyrell Biggs and Dewan Blair. Five in double numbers, pacing what has turned into uh, this what will be a dominant win to go to 2 0 for the sixth ranked team in the land. Well, Miami faced number four UCLA on Friday night, and now number six Pittsburgh tonight. Kenny Hay is going to shoot it three times as Ashton Gibbs will uh, whack Hayes with that shot clock running down. Well, he just had to rise up and take the shot with the shot clock down to, I think it was at three, and Gibbs just, I think he lost where he was on the court, reached up to try and defend and created the contact. And while we have a moment, David and I would certainly like to uh, send our gratitude to Greg Hotchkiss, the outstanding uh, SID here at Pittsburgh, along with head coach Jamie Dixon and his staff for their help with our preparation as well as uh, Charlie Coles and uh, Angie Renninger, the uh, the SID at uh, Miami. Uh, they, such valuable resources for us, David, as we they were prepare great. for Big East uh, Network game night here tonight in Pittsburgh. And we sat down, watched both teams practice, spent time with both coaches, and yeah, it was outstanding. So Kenny Hayes will uh, get the pat on the back from Charlie Coles. Coles in his 19th season. Hayes will uh, leave leading Miami tonight with 18, 9 and 9 from the line. And of course, the 6'2 senior went off for 24 with a perfect 7 of 7 from the three point arc in the Miami win over Weeper State the last week out west. So we're going to approach three minutes left in this one. Gary McGee never got that bounce pass from uh, Brad Wanamaker, who's on the floor. As Miami will come up with a rip away. Well, Miami's uh, last win over a ranked opponent came uh, against Boston College out in the Rainbow Classic in Hawaii in 2001. And for Charlie Coles at halftime, David, you were thinking, wow, strong second half. Down by five. Trying Didn't translate the to the final 20 minutes, did it? No, it did not, because they came out, they missed their first shot. Pitt hit another three, and all of a sudden it was Katie bar the door. They just took control. You look at Miami's upcoming schedule. Wright State, never easy to win at the Nutter Center at Wright State. Xavier at Temple, and then they finally get to come home. But they just keep playing road game after road game <laughs> after road game. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, Brad Bates, the athletic director, Charlie Coles, of course, Millette Hall. They, they have made that a very tough place to win. Here's what's coming up for Pittsburgh's Panthers. They'll go to 2 0. As we said, Keith Dambrod and Akron Zips, strong squad, will be in here on uh, Friday night. That is uh, the next one for Pittsburgh as part of the Legends Classic. And then they get Indiana from Pennsylvania on Saturday. Race into the hoop. Jermaine Dixon, a terrific night for the sophomore out of Baltimore. Dixon now, 14. So he joins us, Sam Young, atop the Panthers' point parade. Stepped up, got a hand in the passing lane, and just great anticipation led to that steal. All right, how do you see the Big East? At halftime, we showed you as uh, Jim Calhoun and his Huskies of Connecticut and Rick Patino and the Louisville Cardinals. 
expected to be the top two squads with Pitt right behind them. I want to get the Kaplan prognostication so I can put it down in the archives and then revisit it in March, my friend. And see how I did? Well, I would say because they have Hashim to beat the big man from yep. Connecticut, very tough to pick against a team with a 7-2 dominator inside. Louisville's athletes are fabulous. Notre Dame has veteran presence and maybe the best pure player in the league in Heron Gody. Uh -huh. Marquette can get up and down the court with anybody. These Pitt Panthers can legitimately contend with anyone. And we haven't mentioned Georgetown or Villanova who are ranked. That so well, you mentioned the, the large seven foot plus dominator. I, I caution you that uh, Georgetown had that for the last two years. And in it Roy didn't Hitler. go as well as they hoped. Exactly. So when you mentioned Connecticut and Jim Calhoun and that fine coaching staff, they have enough guard play is my question. What do you think? I'm going to have to say if I'm picking a team to win the Big East, if they stay healthy, I'm taking Pitt. All right. Kaplan's on the record as Antonio Ballard emphatically drew some reaction from this Peterson Center crowd as he ran the floor there for Miami. And I do like Notre Dame. I, I do, too. Mike Bray's terrific, isn't he? He is. Fabulous. Good job he does. Coaches in this league, though. You know, I had Cincinnati last night. Mick Cronin. Keep an eye on the Bearcats. As we know, Deontay Vaughn, like LeVance Fields, a terrific floor general. Is that three from uh, Antonio Ballard didn't go down, and uh, Fletcher had an opportunity inside, but... Yancey Gates, young freshman out of the city of Cincinnati. Dion Dixon from Crane Tech High in Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. Partner, he was sweet last night in he his can, college basketball he debut. He can fill it Ooh. up. I liked him. So, you know, Mick Cronin's probably going to say, Red Guy, why are you saying oh, Don't put that onus on me. But I love Mick. I think they're a ball club. Remember, they beat Pitt, Louisville, Syracuse, and Nova in Big East play last year. We're 8-5. Lost five in a row, went eight and ten. But they're deeper. The stunt sleeper. Keep an eye on. When you think about the talent in this league, the number of ranked teams and the, the quality, the level of coaching, mm -hmm. you could look, go to play at DePaul, who had some big wins last year, and think, okay, they're at the bottom end of the Big East. And then you play them and you lose, and you go, wait a minute. They're down at the bottom? It's an unbelievable league. The oh, best right. conference in the country, bar none, hands down. Eight to the NCAA field a year ago. They'll get more this year. That's what everybody's saying. So you're right in accord with yeah, everyone. I've yeah. got them with nine. Incredible if it happens. But will be deserved, as always, as Ashton Gibbs with a couple of free throw makes. The crowd reacted. Ryan TC, the local youngster from right here in Pittsburgh, 6'2 sophomore walk-on on the floor. As uh, we'll go into the uh, final 75 seconds of this one. Student section chanting his name. And those are moments he'll always remember. I love it. Gary McGee said, get out of here to Isaiah Carson. Floating to the rim. For Pittsburgh, Brad Wanamaker to get in the book. As we come into the final uh, 60 seconds of this one. Pitt's going to go to 2 0. Oh. Strong move from uh, Julian Mabunga. Mabunga's got a trip to go to the free throw line with it. Speaking of a young freshman, keep an eye on Mabunga in Mid American Conference play when he won't be a freshman by the time uh, Mac play starts. And Charlie no. Coles gets done with giving him his minutes and working him hard on the practice floor. When you play the UCLA's and the Pitts of the world, it makes you a better team when you get to conference play. Sure. I really hope you enjoyed this one tonight. As uh, we have uh, watched Pittsburgh thoroughly take charge and really flex their muscles in the second half as Rodney Haddix will miss the three. A run into the rim off the, the pitch of Pittsburgh was a Tim Fry. And pushing that home is Nasir Robinson. That should punctuate things tonight. Both Tim Fry and uh, Ryan TC get playing time at the end of this one. 
Pittsburgh with the extraordinary depth. Let's speak about depth and improved depth at Cincinnati. I, I don't think Jamie Dixon would quibble with this when, uh, you know, last year, although they were terrific when Levance Fields went down. And uh, as we mentioned, Gilbert Brown was a large part of that. But well, Jamie Dixon, the weapons he has to go to, David. Well, he can play, we were talking earlier in the game, Michael, he can play up tempo speed. He can beat you down half court. He could defend to beat you. He can beat you from the perimeter. He can beat you above the rim. There are not too many teams that can do every single aspect of the game. You want to play which way? Okay, we can play that. Way. That's every facet of the game that you just uh, accounted for. Wanamaker attacking the hoop again. He's going to go to the free throw line with only eight seconds left in it. Pittsburgh. Put 86 on the board to beat Farley Dickinson the other night. And uh, they are approaching the 80 point barrier here again tonight with Brad Wanamaker to put the 80th point in the books tonight. Can't wait for Big East play to begin. And it'll start to New Year's Eve for all the squads in the 16 team Big East Conference. Gary McGee is going to go right back to the free throw line. I was about to say that we've seen our last shot attempt of the night when Pitt came into the uh, into the front court. Off Little did you know. Ten seconds left. <laughs> Glad I didn't. As Brad Wanamaker and uh, Gary McGee now earning trips to the free throw line. Who would have thought? At 35-30 at halftime, this was going to turn into a 29-point lead with seven seconds left. Pittsburgh's Panthers, sixth ranked in the land, will go to 2-0 in this one. As they handle Miami in a strong second-half fashion. The final at 82-53 as... Pittsburgh uses a balanced attack with five and double figures. Don't go away as Jamie Dixon congratulates the Miami Redhawks. 29-point win for Pittsburgh. We'll come back and tell you about it next on the Big East Network.